Going hands-on with a duo of the game's early levels, it's immediately apparent that this is much more of a Super Mario game than we'd expected. Okay, so it's still a tactical battler, that much is true. But a lot of the Mario plus Rabbids Spark of Hope evolution comes from the fact that this is a much less linear game than Kingdom Battle. We're going on an intergalactic journey, this time with the goal of defeating Cursor, a new enemy infecting numerous planets with dark, inky tentacles. Each planet that you land on unfills like an explorable hub akin to something you find in Super Mario Odyssey, or the more recent Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. It's not quite an open world, but these planetary hubs are filled with plenty to distract you from the main quest. There are side quests to complete, puzzles to solve, new routes to uncover, and characters to interact with. In one such side quest, we helped a mad scientist whose lab had been invaded by that dark, inky stuff that we were talking about earlier. The brilliant final battle of this quest involved pushing buttons as we moved through the arena to start up wind machines. Eventually, these would push bomb bombs through the area, enabling one of my party to trigger it and then lob it into the darkness to finally clear the way through. These planet hubs also allow the core story to offer a little more in the way of playfulness and puzzle solving. The Winter Palace, for example, required figuring out several door puzzles in order to keep moving through the castle. They were simple enough, but added some flavour to the gameplay between battles. It's also brilliant for adding some more visual flair and intrigue to the worlds themselves, compared to what we saw in Kingdom Battles. There's just a lot more creativity here with Mario Plus Rabbids Spark of Hope, and the fact that there's an enhanced focus on choice and freedom is clear just from these few early hours that we've had with the game. Being able to trigger and then throw bombs not just at scenery, but also at enemies is a wonderful touch. And you can also use and throw other items during your turns to change the course of the battle as well. Such as POW blocks for damaging enemies within a contained radius, or mushrooms for a quick boost to your health. That freedom also comes into play even more through the removal of the grid in battles. We honestly didn't think it would make that much of a difference, but it makes planning your next move feel more organic. We found ourselves quickly switching between characters to get them into position before even thinking about pulling the trigger. The minute you use your main weapon, you're locked into that position. But until then, you can continue using other special moves or movements like Team Jump to get your crew into the best possible positions. The bunny-eared drone Beepo returns to this title with its own upgrades too, including the Tacticam. It allows you to check out your enemies at any point in the battle to find out what kind of weapons they are using and whether or not they have any elemental strengths or weaknesses. Now this is where the titular sparks come in. These rabid Luma hybrids are funny little creatures, but each come with their own elemental attacks that can be used by any of your party. It might be something that you can add to your main attack, like splash damage or fire damage, or a temporary upgrade to your dash like an electric wave. However, some also have their own unique attacks. Initially, you can partner up one spark with each character, but by the time we'd landed on the second planet on offer during our hands-on session, each of our characters had a duo of sparks assigned to them. You only get two action points per round, which you'll need to use to use the sparks or special moves. So it just becomes this brilliant balancing act of what to use and when. We found ourselves spending far more time on the preparing and planning stages because of the amount of tools at our disposal. Mistakes still happen, of course. The gridless combat makes enemy movements more organic and harder to predict, but we always felt empowered during battle to have a few tricks up our sleeve. And there's no doubt they'll only grow too, with a light RPG upgrade system for both the characters and the sparks. Each battle lets you gain XP, but also coins and star bits. 
coins can be used to buy more in-game items, or even keys to unlock new areas on the map, but star bits are used for upgrading sparks to be more powerful. Handily, when you're wandering around each world, you'll find enemies to battle whenever you fancy it, allowing you to grind a little between quests to make sure you're as ready as you can be. Interestingly, battles trigger in a very Pokemon style, leaping you to a separate battle space, but also allowing you to get a sneaky attack in before the battle even starts with a well-timed dash. It's just another element that makes Mario Plus Rabbids Spark of Hope feel more organic and dynamic. Oh, and did we mention that there are new characters to play as as well? Not only does Bowser switch sides here, but we also get Rabbid Rosalina. While we didn't spend any time with Bowser during this preview, we did meet Rosalina, and she's the perfect teenager. Mumbly, grumbly, and very annoyed to be doing anything but reading her books, but also ridiculously powerful. With a cuddly toy that doubles as a kind of button gun that's simultaneously cute and deadly. Plus there's an entirely new rabbit called Edge, who's all goth and armed with a sword that makes them invaluable in close quarters combat. Oh God! We had far too much fun with Mario Plus Rabbit Spark of Hope. While Kingdom Battle was a brilliant game, it seems that Sparks of Hope has really found itself by embracing the strategic battles, but imbuing them with some more Super Mario creativity and fun. We can't wait to see more come October 20th when it launches exclusively on Nintendo Switch. Let us know in the comments which characters you're most looking forward to playing as in the latest Mario Plus Rabbids game, and remember to subscribe to GamesRadar here on YouTube.